A Reddit post on August 18th, 2024, claimed a shocking discovery. A grandpa's pet fish might be the last survivors of the extinct San Marcos Gambusia. The post read, My granddad has been breeding extinct fish in his basement. I recently visited a relative of mine in Texas and found out that he has been breeding San Marcos Gambusia in his basement for the past seven years. I just found out that the fish were listed as extinct by the FWS. What do I do? The San Marcos Gambusia was a small, live-bearing fish native to the San Marcos River in Texas. It was declared extinct in 2023, having not been seen since 1983. Thousands of people expressed interest in the thread, but a few cautioned the original poster about varying considerations that could lead to the separation of the San Marcos Gambusia and his grandpa. One user suggested, I would speak to my granddad first and see what his wishes are before you take it upon yourself to bring in anyone from the outside. I have seen way too many animal rights people and activists come in and remove stuff they had no business removing just to put them down or have them die due to not receiving the proper care. I would also be concerned about any kind of legal consequences for him as well. I would hate to see them all be taken away, which is an almost absolute guarantee if they are what you say they are. Would a government institution actually be this aggressive in retrieving the San Marcos Gambusia if they were contacted? And if the grandpa was ready to hand them over for examination, what would be the procedures to prove their legitimacy? As I scrolled through the rest of the comments, I looked for someone who could answer a few of my questions. That's when I got in contact with Professor Timothy Bonner, the director of the Aquatic Biology Program at Texas State in San Marcos, to weigh in on the subject. Here's a little bit of the history of the San Marcos Gambus. The publication of its discovery came out in 1969. The first author, Clark Hubbs, is, you know, the well-known ichthyologist from the state of Texas. It was him and his students that discovered the fish in 1969 in the San Marcos River. Well, at the time, it was only found in a very narrow area of the San Marcos River, right around where the I-35 bridge currently stands. He estimated the, the numbers were about a thousand. After that, some more were caught in the 70s, all the way up until the early 80s, and there were only 18 of them caught. And then by 1982, a few more were caught, and that was the last time a non intergrassed San Marcos Gambusia was captured. Unraveling the San Marcos Gambusia's past was like diving into a historical mystery. But the real cliffhanger? Could we even recognize this lost fish if it swam right in front of us? That's when I asked the crucial question. How would an expert identify a San Marcos Gambusia if it was found today? And so I can describe a little bit about what makes it unique and why is it a, a different species. So we have the three species that are native to the San Marcos River, the Western Mosquito Fish, the San Marcos Gambusia, as well as the Large Spring Gambusia. And the definitive characteristics that describe San Marcos Gambusia is primarily by looking at their gonopodial structure. This gonopodium is used to deposit the sperm inside the females so that they can continue developing their, their young. And these structures here of the San Marcos Gambusia, the way they are positioned, they're almost over this structure called the elbow. Whereas in our other species, these little spur-like structures are not over the elbow in either one of them. But keep in mind, you have to look at this underneath the microscope. These are not visible just by looking at the fish. You have to go in with the microscope to confirm this. And that's probably going to be lethal for the fish for us to do that. If the fish proved to be San Marcos Gambusia and the grandpa agreed to expert examination, what would the likely reaction be from conservation agencies? The, the very first step would, you could reach out to me. We also have here in San Marcos, the uh, San Marcos Aquatic Resources Center. You could also reach out to them. But the first thing I would ask for is give me one of those fish. I need a male and for us to look at it. But absolutely, they could contact me, our U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service here in San Marcos. They'd be more than happy to take a look at those individuals. With a clear path to identification and an expert on board, we were ready to connect with the original poster. But a week later, a follow-up post delivered an unexpected twist, the grandpa's final decision. The post read, After days of discussing with what to do with the fish, my granddad has made a final decision. 
I would like to start everything off with the fact that there are a lot of legal issues regarding the ownership of the San Marcos Gambusia that could land my granddad in serious trouble, not to mention harboring any unwanted attention from agencies such as FWS could lead to the full seizure of my granddad's fish, as mentioned by a few people. With that in mind, my granddad has made the decision to keep the fish away from public eye. As for anyone that might be against his decision, remember that these are his livestock. That means that any decision he makes is the decision that we will have to stick to. He has chosen to not surrender his fish to anybody and has every right to. This cannot be argued. Again, thanks for the support, everyone. Hearing the grandpa's decision was truly sad. I wrestled with my own feelings. Part of me saw it as selfish, hindering potential repopulation. But these were his fish, a legacy he's built through generations of breeding. Before giving up, I messaged the original poster on Reddit. Months of unanswered messages from the original Reddit poster led me to cast a wider net, searching local Facebook groups and Discord chats for any hint of a hidden San Marcos Gambusia population. The silence stretched on until one night I received a reply. A local hobbyist reached out and told me how he had caught a few large spring gambusia near Bicentennial Park in San Marcos. This area is only a few hundred feet away from the location where the San Marcos gambusia were originally found by Highway I-35, the same area Professor Bonner mentioned. In the batch he's caught, he noticed a few of the Gambusia looked slightly different from existing photos of the large spring Gambusia. Now, I want to be very clear. The footage you're about to see are not of San Marcos Gambusia, but they are Gambusia from San Marcos. So I caught these guys when uh, me and my buddies, uh, we usually go micro fishing over there in San Marcos and uh, we were looking for sailfin mollies and we were just netting for them. And uh, there's this entrance, uh, secret entrance over by Purgatory Creek. And uh, we were just sitting there fighting off like uh, snapping turtles, you know, they're trying to get us. And we're looking for these sparring sailfin mollies. And um, they, these these guys were literally just a, a, a bycatch of... Uh, of our of our product uh we were just netting for them and we were looking and like trying to make sure they were the mollies because they're a little bit hard to tell apart and um yeah no these guys uh they just ended up coming home with me by actually by accident so it's been pretty good pretty fun raising them like any other guppy uh as they're like pretty similar um they're a little more aggressive to other fish species just because they got kind of like that wild nature uh, to them um but they've been they've been pretty easy and very very hardy if i'm being honest getting up close to these large spring gambusia felt like we were seeing the ghosts of the san marcos gambusia is there a possibility that there are hybrids out in the wild that we just haven't been able to find yet i think i think there are um like we mentioned before we don't know what's happened with like the hybridization of the species and you know maybe there's little pockets of them uh if they even were a species and you know in the beginning um but yeah I, I really do hope that somewhere out there there's you know these guys are having a good time munching on algae or whatever i hope that guy on reddit was uh was right <laughs> and so our search for the san marcos gambusia comes to an end despite our efforts the fish remains elusive a ghost in the waters of San Marcos. For all I know, this Reddit post may have just been a work of creative writing. Even if it was, it's been great to learn so much about this fish and the journey it took us on. While this story ends without a definitive answer, the legacy of the San Marcos Gambusia serves as a reminder of the delicate balance of our ecosystems and the importance of preserving the species we still have. Perhaps one day the San Marcos Gambusia will resurface as a testament to resilience and the enduring mysteries of the natural world. If you've enjoyed the video today, thank you for watching. Our team spent hours of research and editing to tell this story. Something simple as liking the video and subscribing to the channel helps so much and keeps our morale high. To support us even further, please check out our affiliate links for amazing 4K stock footage from ArtGrid, incredible licensed music from Artlist, and mind-blowing AI voiceovers from 11labs.io. Your support helps us keep creating. Lastly, if you're thinking of starting your own aquarium or are in need of reliable fish supplies, check out our friends at Hyger and use code 4KFishes-5 at checkout to get 5% off your next purchase.
Until the next underwater mystery, this is 4K Fishes signing off.